Hello, my name is Rosalind Love and I'm from the Department of Anglo-Saxon Norse and Celtic. And today I'd like to introduce you to Anna and Kate, two of our MPhil students who have just submitted their MPhil dissertations in ASNAC, dissertations that they managed to write under lockdown. So congratulations, both of you, on, on, on getting there. Um, I'd like to ask you a few questions about your experience of uh, coming up through ASNAC, because both Anna and Kate, as well as doing the ASNAC in Phil, also did the under, undergraduate degree. Kate, can you tell me why it was that you, you applied for Anglo-Saxon, Norse and Celtic as an undergraduate? Yeah, you know, I had in mind to apply to ASNAC since, oh, since about like year nine of secondary school. I, oh. for a long time, because I was quite a neurotic child so like when I chose my GCSEs I wanted to choose my A-levels and to do that I wanted to choose what I wanted to do at university first and um, I really liked history, literature and languages and I didn't really want to choose between them and I was always really interested in kind of the medieval period and so I saw that and I was like oh that's perfect and then over the years like I did a little bit of reading and looked into it a little bit and it just the more I looked into it the more perfect it sounded so I yeah I just I really liked the idea of it from the beginning so Great, thank you. What about you, Anna? Um, I think I had. I think I had kind of the opposite <laughs> because I I applied as a mature student and I didn't know ASNEC was a an option until I was applying and I kind of went back to college to finish my A levels and did uh, philosophy, English, and history. But I wanted to do literature. Um, and I wanted. I was looking at courses that had a medieval element, so. I enjoyed medieval literature um, and I found ASNAC that way and I think what attracted me to it was that like Kate I really wanted to to learn languages and I've always enjoyed languages um, and it was such a like a range of I didn't have to kind of narrow myself down to something straight away um, so I think that was a big part of it now I, I kind of I was interested in storytelling and the kind of origins of stories and it's kind of um, it's quite a unique course, I think, for that. So, yeah, I think that's what kind of made my decision to go for that rather than English. Yeah, yeah, great, thank you. And Kate, what, what did you enjoy most about the undergraduate course? If you can pick one thing, that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the literature was the thing that I enjoyed the most. So I did, well, after having done the MPhil as well, I've now done all the languages that you can do. In ASNAC and all the literature like it's so different for each of them and it's so kind of bizarre in a way and it's in a way that's just really interesting and different and I'd say um, although I know you teach Latin roles and that is great but medieval Irish was my my great love yeah. um, during the undergrad and the MPhil it's just it's got a real different tone to it to sort of anything else and I really really enjoyed it. Yeah I, I get the imp I made the mistake that I never chose Irish when I was an undergrad in ASNAC and it's one of the great mistakes of my life because I get a sense that, that there's something really special about medieval Irish literature. Yeah like, I think some people are put off by the language but because they think the language is harder but um, I think it's really really worth it. Yeah what about you Anna? Um, what I enjoyed most I mean I yeah I love Irish as well obviously because we're both doing um, Irish for Anvil. Um, I, I'm like Kate, I did all languages. We both ended up doing pretty much the same papers. So mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the kind of range of languages and literature. Um, I've actually really enjoyed learning a lot about theology just through looking at stories because uh -huh. I didn't really expect that to be a kind of thing that I got interested in, like um, kind of belief systems and um, I think, yeah, it's just, it's really, it's true that all the languages are very different and you kind of go down totally different avenues just from storytelling. So you can like get into kind of medicine or like different kinds of belief. And, and I think you're, you're kind of surprised by what comes up and what you get interested in. Um, uh -huh. So yeah, I think I've, I've enjoyed that kind of range as well. And, and just to just to stay with you for a moment, Anna, what what was the what was the greatest challenge that you found? What what what, what was the thing that, that made you feel you were really um, being tested, so to speak, by the course in a good way, of course? 
Um, I think, I think, I mean, it's hard work. And if you're doing, if you're doing all languages, it's a lot of, a lot of language learning, which is time consuming. Um, having essays every week for me is quite hard because I'm quite, I'm quite a messy person. So some weeks I'm really, really inspired and I'll do loads and loads and loads and then some, some weeks I'm not so good. And I think you have to be quite kind to yourself and let yourself kind of know it's all for you and, yeah. and not get too hung up on everything being perfect. Um, and I'm, I think I had to kind of um, watch myself with that. And you realize at the end, the kind of stuff you've assimilated without realizing, you don't have to be perfect the whole way through. So I think you have to expect that it's hard work, but it's also like really, really rewarding. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't have to be on like, hundred percent all the time that's kind of in your head that you have to yeah to, to do well <laughs> yeah that's great Kate what what did you find w was a challenge um I guess it's a challenge in some way is that sort of how niche it is um so that it's not something that you'll ever have done before mm. and it's not really something you can google the answers for <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but in a way like that's kind of the nice thing about it as well because they don't expect you to know anything about it so like Anna said it's quite full-on so you're doing stuff that you've never done before and you just sort of you get straight into it but I actually in the end I really enjoyed that aspect of it because I like doing something that's a little bit different and I didn't really want to be doing the same thing that I'd been doing at school yeah yeah you clearly enjoyed it so much that you let yourself in for the for the MPhil both of you and it would be great to finish by hearing a little about what what you were what you chose for your the topic of your dissertation for the MPhil. So so what what you got deeply into in in these last months. Um, perhaps Kate, can you can, will you will you start? Yeah, sure. So um, I kind of I'll try and give a very brief version of what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I looked at sort of two categories of tales, of medieval Irish tales, and I looked at whether, which were very similar, they were both like, they were both tales which show you the birth of a certain character, but they had like different names. And then so I looked at those two types and I looked at whether they were two different genres mm -hmm. or whether they were kind of one group of birth tales, kind of generically. So wow. yeah, I was trying to look at whether they were kind of distinct or opposite. So I look, looked at all the themes and examine those kind of things great thank you uh, uh, what, was, what was your topic Anna and how um, I was know? looking at medieval Irish as well but a little bit later material so after the Anglo-Norman invasion um, and I was looking at imagery and how um, how kind of unusual images that sometimes get overlooked because there's a lot of obscure imagery in Irish tales or like odd imagery and yeah. um, how they can be used quite deliberately and meaningfully to kind of allude to things that are not maybe part of the main story and that they're quite playful um which is something i think you get you kind of get the impression with irish from the beginning that it's quite playful storytelling kind of um tradition so yeah that's what that's what i was looking at <laughs> sounds great just one final question to finish um have you got one piece of advice that you'd want to pass on to people thinking about applying for Anglo-Saxon, Norse and Celtic? Perhaps since I'm talking to you, Anna, first. Um, I think I would, what I did as well, um, is looked at the reading list and I just read like one thing from a few of the different languages and I'd actually come across some of it before, but the Irish was totally new to me. Um, and I think, I think just make, just, like dipping in and seeing if you really enjoy it because you're going to be doing a lot of reading um, and it's like it's really fun if you enjoy that kind of material so I would maybe have a look at the reading lists and just like yeah just look at some of the, the stories or whatever history paper you're looking at. Oh, thank you. Kate? Um, Anna's pretty much stolen exactly what I was <laughs> say, but um, yeah I was gonna say because a like it's it is you have to work for it when you're here so you want to make sure that you really enjoy it because a lot of my friends didn't really enjoy their degrees and so when they were working hard for them they didn't enjoy that much but I always felt fine because I really loved ASNAC and what I was doing and so that, uh, 
yeah so I always really enjoyed myself which I know some other people who didn't so yeah for that reason it's good to check things I'd recommend maybe looking more at kind of reading some of the literature some of the history books can be a bit it can be a bit off-putting maybe um <laughs> maybe <laughs> me, I'm not really a historian um yeah and an interview as well because if you're when you're trying to get in what they look for is kind of interest rather than knowledge that you have already so yeah. you just want to check that you're really really interested in it I, I absolutely. Think, absolutely sorry just yeah. to say one thing it just came into my head but I, I think I might have written to someone at the department as well like asking about um so I think if you've got a question I think probably people are quite happy to to respond to that if, if there's something that you're kind of not sure if that's hmm. for you I, or that's something that you're kind of interested in but you, you just feel a bit lost about it all because I know it's in my college no one had ever applied for Earth next so <laughs> you might <laughs> so, yes. ask that what on earth your, is that yes yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 I did that as well actually I think I wrote to you Roz oh yeah I think <laughs> it took a million years to reply but yes uh, yes yeah. well, of course it's it's certainly true that we're absolutely delighted to hear from everybody anyway thank you both so much uh for giving a bit of time to, to help people decide whether they want to come and join us thank you goodbye thank you.